This is a very very interesting question. I will classify this question as a GMAT 700 level problem solving question in algebra. At the core of it, it will appear to be a linear equations question which it is obviously. But what makes this question a 700 level question is it goes a little beyond what we need to know from linear equations to solve this question. So, we essentially need to have some more idea, we need to deduce something about the way numbers behave to be able to get the answer to this question. Let us get started. A children's gift store sells gift certificates in denominations of 3 and 5 dollars. The store sold M 3 dollar certificates and N 5 dollar certificates worth 93 dollars on a Saturday afternoon. Up till this point, it appears to be a normal linear equation question. Let us check out what makes it a not a normal question, right. If M and N are natural numbers, how many different values can M take is what it is. So, from the question, it is evident that we are not going to get a unique value for M. We are trying to find out how many different values can M take. Let us see why that happens in the next slide. We will just put together the key data that we have from this question. Total value of all certificates sold is equal to 93 dollars. How many of in what denominations are they sold in 3 dollars and 5 dollars? How many of each of these denominations M 3 dollar certificates and N 5 dollar certificates is what they are selling brilliant and it says both M and N are natural numbers. Let us frame equations at this stage and see why this is a little more than a typical linear equations question right. We will start with this information. The total value of the certificate sold is equal to 93 dollars in denominations of 3 and 5 dollars and M 3 dollars and N 5 dollars. So, the equation therefore is going to be the value of all 3 dollar certificates is going to be 3 M. The value of all 5 dollar certificates is going to be equal to 5 N. The total value is mentioned to be equal to 93. So, I got one equation good. We need a second equation. Second equation is the total number of certificates sold. So, M 3 dollar certificates plus N 5 dollar certificates is equal to what? How many certificates did they sell? They had sold 11 certificates then we can solve it and get the answer. They sold 17 certificates, we can find the answer. They sold 93 certificates, we can find the answer. Some number on the right hand side is required. That is missing and that is what makes this question not have a unique value for M and N. Otherwise, these are two equations where A1 by A2 is not equal to A B1 by B2, which means you solve this, you get an answer. 3 by 1 is not equal to 5 by 1, which means that you will have a unique answer. But this right hand side number is missing. We do not know how many certificates they sold. So, they are asking us to find out how many different values can M take. Correspondingly, there will be different values that N can take, which means that we are finding out how many different values can the total number of certificates that have been sold on that particular Saturday afternoon be, which is what makes this question an interesting question. We do not have a second equation. We have one equation and some information about M and N. Both M and N are positive integers. Both M and N are natural numbers. Let us move on, let us just make sense out of it. Look at the total value sold, that is 93 dollars and we know that 3 as a number, 3 dollar certificates have been sold, 3 divides 93 which means that on that Saturday afternoon all certificates sold could have been 3 dollar certificates, possible right. So, 93 divided by 3 could have sold 31 3 dollar certificates and not even a single 5 dollar certificate. So, what would have been the count then? We will say 31 m is equal to 31, n is equal to 0. But this is not a possible value for the simple reason that if n is equal to 0, then n is not a natural number. The question explicitly states that both m and n are natural numbers. So, m cannot be 31, n cannot be 0. We need to have at least n to be equal to 1. It has to be a natural number. It has to be a positive integer. So, n being 0 is not a possibility. So, what do we do, right? So, we know that this question specifies both m and n are natural numbers. So, 0 5 dollar certificate is not a possibility. So, what we will do is, we will use this 93 dollars, 31 certificates, 3 dollar certificates as a starting point for us and then deduce how we can proceed, right. So, let us go about it, right. Let us reduce the number of 3 dollar certificates. We will go to what is written here in a while. We will reduce it one by one and see if in the amount that we release from that, will we be able to sell integer number of 5 dollar certificates. The point at which we will be able to do that, we will deduce something about numbers and then move on from there, right. So, we are starting with 31, the total value is equal to 93 dollars for it, right. We are selling 3 dollar certificates right now. So, and 5 dollar certificates, this is m is equal to this, n is equal to 0 and the value of all 5 dollar certificates sold is equal to 0. So, this is where we are. Now, let us reduce it by a 1, let us see whether it makes sense. We will go up to 30. So, 3 dollar certificate sold we have got 90 dollars. How much money have we released in this process? We have released 3 dollars. 
in that we cannot sell any five dollar certificate so this is not a possibility because to sell integer number of five dollars we need to release five dollars or multiples of five dollars so 30 is not a possible case let's reduce it further by a one so that will make it as 29 three dollar certificate sold we'll get 87 dollars total value of the certificate sold is 93 dollars so if we sold 87 dollar worth of three dollar certificates we have released six dollars from it in that we will not be able to sell integer number of 5 dollar certificates. So, now that is also not a possibility. Now, let us move on. Let us make it 28. 28 times 3 is equal to 84. Total value of certificate sold is 93. So, what we have got? We have released 9 dollars out of it in which again we will not be able to sell integer number of 5 dollar certificate. This is also not a possibility. Let us go down to 27. 27 threes are 81. 93 dollars is the total value of certificate sold. So, we are releasing 12 dollars by not selling so many uh, 3 dollar certificates. When we sell only 27, 81 dollars worth of 3 dollar certificates is sold. We got 12 more dollars. In which can we sell integer number of 5 dollar certificates? Not possible. Go down to 26 and see what happens. 26 into 3 is 78. 93 dollars worth of certificates were sold. So, how many have we got released? We got released 15 dollars with us. In that, will we be able to sell a, a integer number of 5 dollar certificates? Yes, we will be able to sell 3 5 dollar certificates. This will again add up to a 93. 78 plus 15 is equal to 93. So, 31 is not a possibility because the n is 0 which has to be a natural number. We kept on reducing to see where it would make sense. 30, 29, 28, 27 did not make sense because the amount of money that got released by reducing the number of 3 dollar certificates was not enough or was not a number which is a multiple of 5 to sell integer number of 5 dollar certificates. The place where it happened was when it was a 26. So, how many did we have to release? We have to reduce it by 5. Let us see why this made sense. Let us say we are reducing the number of 3 dollar certificates sold by x. So, here we have reduced it by a 5, that 5 is this x. And correspondingly, let us say the 5 dollar certificate sold by us increases by a count of y. So, when I reduce the 3 dollar certificates by a value of by x count, the amount of money that I get out of it is basically 3x dollars. I am using this to sell 5 dollar certificates. How many of them? Why 5 dollar certificates? So, basically the value of all the 5 dollar certificates now additionally sold is going to be equal to 5 y dollars. The money released by reducing the number of 3 dollar certificates is equal to the money that we will get by selling 5 dollar certificates. So, 3x is equal to 5 y. 3x is equal to 5y. Now, let us understand this is where what I talked about core properties of numbers kicks in, right. This 3x as a number, look at it, it is 5 times an integer. Y is an integer. So, 3x is 5 times an integer, which means that 3x is a multiple of 5. 5 times an integer is a multiple of 5. It could be a 15, it could be a 25, it could be a 50. So, 3x is a multiple of 5. 3x is a multiple of 5. 3 is not a multiple of 5 which essentially boils down to the fact that x should be a multiple of 5. So, that is the inference, x is a multiple of 5. I am going to repeat this so that we can consolidate this idea. 3x is equal to 5 times an integer. So, it is evident that 3x is a multiple of 5. 3 is not a multiple of 5, but 3x is a multiple of 5. That is possible only when x is a multiple of 5. Extend the same logic from this side. 5y is 3 times an integer, which means 5y is a multiple of 3, right. This is inference 1, this is a second inference, 5y is a multiple of 3, multiple of 3, 5 is not a multiple of 3, which means that the only way 5 by could have been a multiple of 3 is when y is a multiple of 3. Let us see whether that panned out in this listing down that we did, y is a multiple of 3. We reduced the value by which x, the 3 dollar certificates reduced. Was it down by 5? Yes, 31 to 26. It came down by a 5, which means that the quantity by which the 3 dollar certificates are going to go down is always going to be in steps of 5. Reduce it by a 5, it will work. Reduce it further by a 5, it will work. Correspondingly, how many y dollar certificates, 5 dollar certificates did we go up, right? We were at 0, it went up to 3. The next time, when I reduce it by another 5, let us just check that number directly. 21 times 3 is equal to 63. We are left with 30 dollars. How many 5 dollar certificates will you be able to sell for 30 dollars? 6. Did this count go up by a 3? Yes. Y has to be a multiple of 3. X has to be a multiple of 5. Essentially pointing out to the fact that we are going to be reducing 3 dollar certificates from the 31 count, which is not a feasible solution, in steps of 5. We are going to count down 5 each time. Let us keep listing it down till such time 
m and n continue to remain natural numbers or positive integers and add the count from there right so this part is the crux of solving this question let's now quickly run uh, list on all the possibilities 31 is not a working possibility we know so we'll start with 26 26 3 dollar certificates adding up to 78 dollars correspondingly n would have gone up by a 3 which we saw in the last slide right so this is the information 26 and 3 so we're going with that 26 uh, 3 dollar certificates 3 5 dollar certificates which will give 15 dollars total value is equal to 93 i'm reducing it by a 5 because the number of 3 dollar certificates is going to go down in multiples of 5 right in counts which are multiples of 5 so bring it down by a 5 this is going to be 21 21 times 3 the value is going to be 63 this has to go by correspondingly a 3 because in what count will 5 dollar certificates increase they're going to increase in counts of 3 so this will become a 6 6 times 5 is equal to 30 is the sum equal to 93 makes sense bring it down again by a 5 this is equal to a 16 16 times 3 is equal to 48 take it up by a 3 9 9 times 5 is a 45 48 plus 45 is equal to 93 we'll repeat this process till we hit a value which is a last natural number that will work for this 11 11 times 3 is 33 increase it by a 3 that's a 12 12 times 5 is equal to 60 33 plus 60 is equal to 93 can we take it further down it continues to be a natural number even when we keep take down from 11 down to 6 6 times 3 is an 18 this is going to go up by a 3 which is 15 15 times 5 is a 75 adding up to a 93 can i take it further down yes 1 bringing it down by another 5 1 times 3 is equal to 3 this goes up by a 3 18 18 times 5 is a 90 which is a 93 can i bring it down further 1 minus 5 is a minus 4 which is not a natural number so these are all the possible values that m can take correspondingly these will be the values that n can take so how many values can m take 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 possible values m can take right so why was this not a typical linear equation question we had one equation with a value but we did not have another equation with a number of certificates so essentially to get the same 93 dollars with m and n being natural numbers how many different combinations are possible we could have sold 26 plus 3 21 plus 6 16 plus 9 11 plus 12 6 plus 15 1 plus 18 so many different possibilities existed for the second equation m plus n we did not know which of these combinations was what was available to us which is why the question asked us to find out how many possible values can m take essentially it's saying give me potential values for the right hand side of the second equation for which we did not have a number lovely question run through this question once more these are the questions which could appear once you cross the 20th plus question you're doing very well in the gmat quant section you need to be prepared for this you need to want to solve questions of this kind in the real examination which actually points to the fact that you're doing very well in the examination best wishes for your gmat preparation